This video is of our most recent trip to the UP over Labor Day weekend. We visited Peninsula Point Lighthouse, cleared some additional trail, camped on our own land, and had to perform a high lift jack recovery. Okay, so a big decision. This will be the first time we camp on our own acreage. So we're either going to put the trailer here on this spot, stick the table there behind Kathy and the tent. Hey, Fred! And the tent would open this way. And there's a kind of a deep depression right there. I'm trying to decide where to set up the tent. We figured we'd camp out here this time. They haven't been terribly just now. Yeah, so I think terrible, I should say. I think Kathy's right. I think this is a smarter spot. So I'll just pull the trailer up onto that level ground right there, open the tent uphill, and stick the table out into those cut trees from last time. I can always toss those further in the wood or cut them up and make a bigger spot there. I think that's going to be our first spot. And that should be, it's real close to the northern boundary of the land, but last time I looked, I'm pretty sure that's still on our land. So it's kind of cool. First chance to camp on our acreage. Okay, our first time camping on our own land in a new location. Well, that is pretty close to the northern border. We decided to set up here instead of over there. And we're still right at like the eastern border of the land. So we eventually intend to go further and further west. We also had a new idea about putting the fridge out on the little hitch extension dealy there. That should work. And the next step is put up a tarp awning here so if it rains it won't hit the electronics of the fridge. Okay, drive the truck down. Just had lunch with Kathy. Try and set up the GoPro to be able to view. A fairly complicated thing I'm going to try to do. So I had the chainsaws out. Did quite a bit more trail clearing. Now this is hardly a groomed trail, but it should be passable. So I'm basically just throwing down logs and chunks of stump and everything to try to make sure the truck won't end up in a bog and I'm going to try and put the trail camera and its solar cell up in that tree. So I'm going to try and drive the truck down in front of it. Just spent a bunch of time cutting up that stump, throwing all the chunks of wood around, make it passable. So we'll see how the Hummer does. I'm going to try and drive over this. This is the blue loop I've been trying to create anyway. Then I'm just going to back up to that tree to see if I can stand on it and mount the trail camera and its solar cell. Now you can't see now, but earlier in the day that's about as much clear view of the southern sky as you're ever going to get around here. So lots more clearing to do here.
how often do my diabolical plans work? This one's actually, so far, working extremely well. So if I finish this video, you'll know I didn't fall off the tree and impale myself. It's actually looking pretty good here. And that's the trail camera in the box. Just got to get that sorted. So at this point, I climbed up on the back of the truck, which proved to be a very useful workbench. Unfortunately, what I did not know at this time is you cannot mount trail cameras more than three to five feet above the ground because their motion detector won't trip and it won't take pictures of anything. It took us quite a while to figure that out. However, it was not a lot of wasted time because it was a good place to mount the solar panel with a nice clear view of the southern sky or at least as clear as a view as you're ever going to get uh, in a forest like that. But the uh, whole installation went reasonably smoothly and for the rest of the trip I was able to grab the occasional image, unfortunately mostly of us or of the truck driving by. But uh, since we returned home from that trip, I have uh, caught quite a few interesting images. or whatever they're called. And 
these large logs as a corduroy, but that's not the problem. Let's see what it is. This one can lift it by its wheel. So the advantage of this is instead of however you want to get a shot of the traction board help, it's such a sharp angle and those are kind of cheap crappy traction boards, the tire is not grabbing and pulling off. Now if I drove right now, I'm just going to voice over my commentary here. A number of people have said the one piece of recovery gear they never really use is a high lift jack. I find that kind of odd because it's a piece of recovery equipment that I use, if not the most, probably tied for the most. So there's a lot of fumbling around here, I guess a few key points. One is a high lift jack uh, equipped with a couple of accessories. So one is I could have picked it up by the rock rail, but then the tires are allowed to droop. This is uh, an accessory that high lift sells, so you can hook directly to the spokes of a wheel. Then you can lift a tire directly, put something underneath it. Now here I foolishly just put a rotten log, dropped it, and it really didn't accomplish much. Later I put a traction board under there. Fortunately, before I do any real damage, I realize that I'm not just high centered on my rock rail on top of that stump. The uh, soil and everything sank quite a bit more than I thought, so the uh, stump there stuck up pretty high. But in fact, the transfer case is wedged on a stump just next to that stump. So had I continued to try to force my way forward, I probably would have done damage. I finally got it resolved by lifting the front wheel, putting a traction board under it, and then lifting the rear wheel, putting a traction board under it, and then driving backwards. I was tempted to break out the receiver winch to pull backwards, just because I can. But uh, in the end, just lifting up and putting the wheels down on traction boards was perfectly adequate for the problem. So aggravating. Yeah, I just need to put something firmer underneath there. I was really hoping that would be enough. stump is like two inches that way. That should work. So you just want to make sure when I bring it down the rock rail, these off the stump. A quick note here, if you notice with my right hand at some point in here I go to swat a fly or a mosquito up around my head. You do have to use a lot of caution with high lift jacks. Not only are they unstable, but that bar has a lot of force behind it. So in that case, I wasn't in immediate danger, but you can easily see how I could have let that bar hit me right in the face with a little left. Amazing how I can feel the ground. I think. Ah. Yeah. 
I'm seeing the rock rail here, but it's the transfer case that's slamming in there. Yeah, so it's high centering at the transfer case. I have to. The transfer case won't allow him to go forward, so he's going to back up. Yeah. Blockers and traction boards. Wow. Okay, now there's two ways to attack this. One is to get the chains out here. Just try to lower and lower and lower that. The other is to stack logs before and after it so that it will be able to clear it. I vote for the chainsaw. Okay. So we're going to do the opposite. <laughs> Your judgment is far better than mine in this situation. I cannot believe those orange things that are not called Max Tracks didn't break. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, you could, this one's not great at For what it's worth, my generic traction board there did actually crack. I wasn't overly upset or concerned, though, considering how much I had abused it. Something I'd seen Ronnie Dahl do in a video where he tested various brands of Max Tracks. And uh, this is one test where many of them failed. In that case, I lifted the wheels, I put the traction board beneath them, lowered the weight, and they were straddling a, a bit of a depression in the ground. So as I rolled back, basically those traction boards supported the full weight of the truck on that side. So uh, they fared reasonably well. I don't know if you can tell in the video, I, I kind of point to it eventually. I think it's the one in my left hand. You can kind of see where it's got a little deflection and the plastic did crack there. However, I still have them on my truck. They're still useful. Okay, so I took my wife's advice. Before we attempt round two, I took the chainsaw out, lowered that quite a bit, and took everything I cut out of it, threw it to the side. Now, if, ever, if you ever use a chainsaw on a stump, you know, that just burns your chain up. But we'll see. I was less of a knucklehead this time see if I can just go through here. I do think this time I use a little more speed, though in that case, the transfer case was going to hit that stump really hard. So I'm glad I went backwards instead of trying to force my way through. High centering is high centering. It does have a skid plate, but I don't know that it would have worked in that situation. All right, well, hopefully that'll work out. You can see my tracks there. Again, I'm kind of using rotten logs for cheesy corduroy here. I don't mind that the tires smash them. This is soft, bogey soil. Now here in September, it's quite nicely dry. I mean, you can see this is still, a, I mean, even on, with no rain, there's so much moisture in the vegetation and the soil that yeah, the tires are immediately wet when you drive. But Again, the soil's reasonably firm here. I would never be able to use a pull pal, but... So I used the chainsaw, shaved down the top of the stump significantly, and then I took what I cut out of it and pushed it from side to side there and made a little bit better ramp up and down. It's always hard to guess tire placement. And then I just had to keep the lockers on and just go, 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 and got through here pretty easily. I knew whatever was in the way was soft and would yield. Same thing there, when I cut up this stump, I piled everything there to fill the holes. So over the months and years, I'll probably put more and more corduroy down. And this guy was pretty rooted to the ground, but quite rotten. 
Looks like I gave him a glancing blow. All right, so the trail cam takes a picture of me every time I do this, but every time I walk over there, but uh, it's actually pretty cool here. So the second time it wasn't even close. Now I got through that, but then this is the other part that I knew would be exciting. Again, cameras never do it justice, but the hill's no big deal. Even rainy or muddy, I don't think that'll ever be a problem, but the mirrors just fit between those two trees. So I thought that was pretty funny. Okay, I'm zoomed in this time. I'll just do this one more time. This is kind of nice. We've got the path over to where our tent is set up. That's actually in the middle of the path I made to go out the north end of the property. So I didn't mind camping there because it's only us out here. Eventually I won't camp in that spot because I want to keep the whole route open. So our wonderful neighbor, Sandy, was an old abandoned farm road on her property. She said, feel free to use it. So we fired up the chainsaws and got that cleared. It wasn't very hard at all. Whereas that trail there to the north, that was just brutal. Okay, but back to the topic at hand. So we can enter the property right here. And again, the picture never does these things justice. None of these are easy. You kind of come in a tight squeeze between these two trees, come down here very off camber and steep. And then you're almost touching the tree on your right and the tree on your left. Don't know what this is going to be like in winter. And you can see how uneven the ground is there. You can eventually just fix that with a shovel, I suppose. And then you have to stay between this tree and this tree as you, now if you go up the north path, it's no big deal. But if you want to swing over here, it's pretty challenging. And you can see I left a bit of a stump there. I might come back and cut that one up, old stump off to the side. There's another example where I had to cut up a high stump and then throw the chunks that I cut out of the stump before and after it to make it make the ramp. And you can see here how the soil's starting to sink. And eventually, if I don't fill in something there, I'll throw some logs down or something. All right, and you can kind of see here, I come back into the loop. Now I didn't try super hard, but I did kind of try to swing this wide. And even with a short wheelbase, tight turning circle, I don't know that I'll ever make this. I guess I'd be a little more aggressive. I didn't come all the way over here. So I just did a two point turn. I kind of pulled up, backed up, and then took this. And this is the one exciting part you didn't get to experience from the passenger seat. Doesn't look like much. There is not much room between those two trees. <laughs> it was like, you know, I was going slow anyway, but my right mirror just missed the tree on the right and my left mirror was about to hit the tree on the left. So going in and going out, I want to leave those three trees because that's a, like a really just nice tight gate. Tight gate. Is okay, well that's it. I am done for today. And here are some stills from the trail camera that kind of show just how tight the entrance and exit to these trails are. I really don't mind that. The Hummer and Kathy's uh, Wrangler can fit just fine.
Peninsula Point Light Station. Hello, below. Huh, didn't even get a wave. It's a little hard to see with the uh, vertical orientation of the iPhone, but I just uh, took this little recording because I do get a kick out of the entrance to our land. It's kind of like the Bat Cave. It's uh, essentially invisible from the road, either if you uh, enter from the north or the south. So I enjoy the trails, but you can kind of see driving off the road right there, especially if you're coming from the north to the south. But even from the south, you absolutely cannot see that gap in the trees. Okay, he turned around somewhere. Maybe he went all the way to the meadow. Trailer's still attached, so we're doing well. <laughs> 